So basically, I'm a human being who is definitely living in this third dimensional reality, but who is being pulled further into the fifth dimension. start everything out with that you're a former Catholic sister and that you have a doctorate part but my background is mind-body psychology with an emphasis in energy healing and hypnotherapy and I was a Catholic sister for 20 years in which I actually did the mysticism stuff and prayer and really deep in my spirituality as well as struggling with things like the vow of obedience and chastity. I don't know if people are familiar with the rays. So the first ray is the blue ray, which is the will of God, which is about obedience. And so I bring those together with a degree in theology, and I bring all of that together in who I am. And lately, I have had a Something's going on inside of me. I'm not sure what it is, but it's actually kind of bringing together more of my Catholic mysticism background with what I'm channeling with Alma and the other beings that I work with. And I would say, I think it was Greg Braden once that wrote a book called Walking Between the Worlds. And that's where I feel like I am right now, walking between the worlds. So that's, that's really an excellent question because it brings me spiritually where I am. So I was a cradle Catholic. My mother was a convert, and as often happens being a convert, she was much more Catholic than my father. And I remember, though, of we lived in Galveston. My dad decided to go back to medical school, actually pre-med, when his fifth kid was born. And so the windows were open. We were always three blocks from the beach. We could hear the waves. And I remember one time looking out through the screen and actually looking at the moon and seeing like a cross that was brought by that, and it, it did strike me. My mother became involved in what's known as the charismatic renewal in the Catholic Church, and that is, for people who don't know that, that's where you have the praying in tongues, the gifts of prophecy, the gift of healing. And by the way, the gift of prophecy is really what channeling is. And she wanted me to become involved in that. And I rebelled. I'm really good at, uh-uh, uh-uh. I rebel, I rebel. And, but when I was, it was the summer after my freshman year in college, and my sisters and I, we did get prayed over for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which introduced me to the deep mystical realm. Because when we were working with the gifts of the Spirit, such as healing, such as discovering that energy moved through you, such as what they call the gift of prophecy, which is basically means it's not foretelling the future, it is a word from the Lord. And that's what it is, which is what channeling is, right? And so I became used to that. I became used to the praying in tongues and the energy just coming through me and words flowing out of that. So that kind of prepared me. I was... Um, seriously dating uh, a guy in, in college. We were all on a retreat team together. And his current wife was my best friend in college. And it was not, it was me making the decision not to marry him or not to continue in the relationship. We were close to engagement. And afterwards, I kept saying, okay, God, you obviously didn't want me to get married. What do you want me to do? And I heard, enter the convent. And I said, no. What do you want me to do? Enter the convent. No. <laughs> and that went on for about six months. And finally I said, okay, I'll give it a try. And I was there for 20 years. I got deeper and deeper into my experience of connecting with God. And I did have an experience very much of what you hear some people say of Jesus being very personal to me. And I was a fairly traditional Catholic, except I was on the feminist side of that. And then I became, I 
got in touch with energy healing. And there was, an, I was the administrator of our retirement home at the time. This is towards the end of my convent years. And the woman who was the nurse took a class called Healing Touch. And she kept trying to get me to take it. And I kept saying, no, 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 that sort of thing. And uh, finally, I said yes. And I took the class. And I felt like I'd come home. It, I became aware of what the energy that had been throwing, flowing through my hands through the charismatic renewal, what that meant. And how that happened and how to manage it. And we had a number of sisters that took Healing Touch. It's the only thing, I'm the only one that it took me out of the convent. Because what happened is I became aware of spirituality and God in a way that was very different. So it's like here I'm in this little box as in Roman Catholic, and then suddenly I introduce a God that's, I'm introduced to a God that's not out there, but that's in here. I was having many mystical experiences with the whole sense of the energy of God coming through me. And one day something came through, and I was used to this because of the gift of prophecy that is in the charismatic renewal. It is, if people want to go read about it, go read 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. And that kind of sums up the charismatic renewal. And an energy started coming through me. And I stated what it is. And a friend of mine who was also involved with it, I met her through Healing Touch, said, well, where did that come from? And I went inside and I said, it comes from the place of Banah in the Kabbalah. It comes through the Kabbalah. And Banah is, in the Kabbalah, you have the Ein Sof, which is the undifferentiated God. And then the first division into masculine and feminine is Hakma, which contains Abba, which is what Jesus used, Abba, and Amma which is in the place of Bana. And so that was my first introduction, is that it was from the place of Bana, that it, and later came to know that it was Alma, the Divine Mother, who is who I channeled the most, even though it was not the first person that I channeled. Now, an interesting side note, going back to Catholicism and going to being in the convent, I was on a retreat and it was very soon, it's when I was a baby nun, and we were making a retreat, and I had this deep, awesome spiritual experience of the feminine aspect of God. That's what I called her. I saw her dancing around the globe. And she, and even now when I talk about it, I kind of get really emotional about it. I could see her eyes, which were the deepest, deepest brown. And she was literally dancing and she was touching everyone. Is almost told me, she said, that was me introducing myself to you. So I'm out of the convent and one day I'm visiting my aunt and I have a tendency to, not anymore, I do much better, but driving like an idiot. One of my guides, when I met him, I said, are you the one that got me out of, and he said, you were driving like an idiot. And, um, I was, it had been raining and I was going too fast for the rain and I was coming up to a place and this woman, I always blame her, but I really don't anymore. I used to, she has stopped at a yield sign and I slammed on my brakes. I thought I was going to miss her. It was, I sideswiped her and that made a tremendous change in me. What I realize now is I rewrote my contract for this lifetime. I was actually supposed to leave the planet at that point. And I had for about 48, 72 hours, I had energy surrounding me of death. I saw the police, not the police, the fire department coming with the jaws of life, pulling out the body of the woman that I had hit. I would have hit her at 60 miles an hour, rear-ended her pulling out her body, pulling out mine, and pulling out the body of my little dog because uh, she was with me. 
and that swirled around and I was trying to make sense of all that for a number of months and went to a couple of psychics and stuff like that and found out that that was one of the primary times but that I was supposed to leave but I rewrote my contract which we can do it's like we don't always do it consciously I have a way of taking people through it if they want to do it consciously but of course our soul self, which is what Amma calls the higher self, she doesn't like hierarchical stuff, but she calls the higher self is always in charge with that. Soon after that, because an energy came into me at that time, it was, it was like a walk-in, but it wasn't a real walk-in where you exchange souls and you don't remember anything. I've met people that have had that. But that's when I started channeling and a friend of mine I don't know if anybody's heard of reconnective healing or the reconnection, but he was trained in that. And he asked if he could barter with me and do a reconnection with me in exchange for me channeling Dwakul for him because he really enjoyed Dwakul. And it was about a month after the reconnection that I started channeling in earnest then started doing it publicly, finally submitted something to the Sedona journal Melody got back to me very quickly and said, would you be willing to contribute regularly? I get really nervous. I didn't realize this about me, but when I'm asked to do things, I'm usually, uh-uh, you know, and I notice how Alma has grown me up. She doesn't tell me everything. So, and not out of, she just doesn't want to scare me. That's all it is. I was studying marketing, and the big thing was write a, a seven-day email course. And Amma said to me, I want you to write a seven days worth of messages from me to give to your people so that they get emails with that. And I said, okay. So she said, I'll give you the messages. And so, and she did, and I wrote them in seven days, and it was like, oh. I mean, I probably did it in about three days. And I said, Felt really comfortable with that. And she said, oh, that's wonderful. You know, let's, let's make this a month long course. And I went, oh, okay. And so I sat down and I was in the flow of it. And so when I finished, I said, how's that? And she said, you did really well. I'd like you to do a year long course. And I said, 365 days? And she laughed and she said, 366. And I did, and it's been out for a number of years. I'm actually now going over the course and editing it some, and it's gonna become a book as well as something that people can do. And she's done that with me with different things. She had me do other courses and she didn't tell me how much time it would take. But by the time that I got to channeling these books, which you see behind me, is I was past that. And um, I'd love to tell the story about these books because it was an amazing experience. And a friend of mine was taking lessons to be an oracle. And she said, would you be one of my subjects? Cause I have to do a certain number of people to do this. And I said, sure. And she came in and she was talking to me and I kept getting distracted and finally I said, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to stop you. There is a being standing back against you. At the time I was actually living in Bell Rock Inn right near here in the resort. So you could say the being was against the wall, but it was, she was further back. I said, I've got to find out who this is. And so I, she said, sure. And so I asked, I said, who are you? And this being he, he doesn't really have a gender, but that's his energy was more of the masculine. He said, I am the golden Elohim, and we would like to give you a book. And that's the creation of form. I knew, and I told him yes, and I know me. I have to have somebody to keep me in accountability. And so what came to me is, go to your email list, ask him if anybody wants to pay for the honor of listening to me channel. And so that helped bring in some income for me. It's amazing how abundance works. And 
that's what I did. I, we met, we started out at twice a week, but that wore me out too much. So we went to once a week until it was finished. And on the last session, he said, thank you. And he said, I want to introduce someone to you. And it was a group of beings, which I have known as Amma's healing friends. And they gave me a name that was about this long, of which I can't remember. They came in singing it and said, well, you may call us Amiya. And so I called them Amiya and they said to me, we want you to channel a series of books known as the Encyclopedia of Healing. And they actually gave me a list of like 20 books. I think the eighth or ninth one is gonna come out soon. And I don't get a big thing about channeling anything new now, but I know that there will be later. But it has been an amazing experience, which brings me to what happens when all of this channel, with all this channeling, what happens to me as a person? I receive healing every time I channel. These books, they talk about the encodement system which Amma gave me. Let me tell you, when she started talking about encodements, which was very early in my part of channeling, I'm thinking, okay, Kathy, you're going crazy. I mean, here's this stuff coming in. The thing about any of these books, whether it's from the, create, the creation of form to any of these other books, you don't have to know anything about encodements, although they are your smallest energy center, centers, and I will talk to you about those structures is better. They're your smallest, they are your smallest energy structures. But you don't have to know anything about them to use this book. Don't get overwhelmed. All you have to do is read it. All you have to do is follow the processes that are being given to you in here, and healing occurs. I, had, I do something called encodement intensives, which are like two hour, go in and let's heal something. And I had a guy do some things with videos. He's from, I think he was from India, maybe Pakistan, but from there. And he told me that as he was working through these things and he had to go over it and over it, he said, I can't tell you how I felt and how I could feel things being released in me. He knew nothing about it. He was just doing that. And so you can read some of these things in here and just follow it step by step. And healing occurs. Again, you don't have to know anything about these books. We made a mistake in giving you the name of, of the title of these books. Like here's the first one. The human energy field, there's three books on the human energy field. And the first one is all the R on the R. It's very short when you talk about it. But the reason that we misnamed it, it is not anything about the R that you know. It is totally new stuff. It talks about the construction of the R. It talks about how you can actually get congestion between the layers of your R, even though there's not separate. So that's that, and then there's the one on the chakras. This is not anything you know about the chakras. And I really wasn't aware of that until um, somebody who had read this, he said, you know, I didn't read the books on the R and the chakras because I know about the R and the chakras. And he said, and then I was guided to read it and it's, there's nothing in here I know about, but we use encodements which form, let's call it your computer operating system of your life. You ever wondered, why are you attracted to, here we are in Sedona, Arizona. Why are you attracted to Sedona, Arizona? Because you have devised your plan before you incarnated of what you want to experience and you want to experience Sedona. So I'm a Texan. I'm a sixth generation Texan on one side and a seventh generation Texan on the other side. And here I am in Arizona, never intending to do that, except I made a three-week time of being here in Sedona and left saying, I'm going to move here. And I did about three years after that. Well, that's programmed into my encodement system. But there are things called 
artificial encodements, which are not the ones that you were born with, okay? Or let me clarify it even more. They're not developed by the encodement team for you. So for instance, an artificial encodement can be someone else's anger protect, projected onto you. It can be your anger that comes up from within you. Whereas the natural encodements are different because they're within your plan and you can very simply connect with your healing team, which contains your encodement technicians and ask them, please remove the artificial encodements that I acquired when, and that could have been when you were acquired at a difficult birth or that you acquired when you and your husband or your partner or your spouse or your friend had a big blow up and just say, please remove all of those artificial encodements. Please repair the damaged and altered ones because your encodements can get damaged just like your chakras can get damaged. And when you go in like working with the chakras, you can say, please remove the artificial encodements which caused a tear in my heart chakra. At the top of your physical heart, so let's say this is your physical heart because it's about the size of your fist. At the top of your physical heart, about a third the size, but it's divided in half, a half of the third, which makes one sixth of the structure of your heart, is on the bottom. And then at the top is the energetic, a continuation of the energetic part. So I want to invite all of you who are, who are watching or listening, focus on the top of your physical heart. Just focus. There's an energy structure there. Know that it's there and focus on it. Okay, now bring to mind a part of your physical body, actually focus on it, that hurts. Could be a tight neck. It could be a knee that's bothering you. Now hold the connection between, we call it the heart healing center, by the way. Hold the connection between the heart healing center and I'm gonna hold it on the back of my neck right here. And just wherever it is, hold it and feel it connect. By the way, stay in your heart when you do this and feel it connect. And notice what happens when you feel it connect. And now try this. Just ask your healing team, just know you have one. Ask your healing team, please remove any artificial encodements in that part of the body you're holding that is causing pain or discomfort. Now, healing team, please Repair the damaged and altered natural encodements which are causing discomfort. There you go. That's the two basic principles of it. And you can do that with anything. So, for instance, if you had an argument with someone, it doesn't matter who it is, it could be the cashier at the store and you're leaving and you're feeling distressed, just go into your heart, connect with your healing team and say, encodement team, please remove all artificial encodements that I acquired at the time of that event. Please repair all the damage and altered natural encodements which occurred. That will clear you even more. And you can change all kinds of things. So what happens with me when I'm bringing in these energy, by the way, these are channeled through Amiya, who is Amma's healing friend. So like it says here, it has my name here. And then it says Amma and friends coming through me. I receive the same healing. I receive the exact same healing. So as I'm saying, relationship and something comes up and I don't even have to know because I'm not focusing on myself. But then there's changes. And so the years that I have been channeling this, I've received healing each time. It has changed me so 
profoundly. I, um, it's interesting how genetics work here because part of what Alma and Alma's healing friends have revealed to me are things of generational healing. Is that we go back into the generations and ask for healing and the undoing. We change encodements. So if I, and there's a process that I use mainly through muscle testing of going back, did this come from my mother's side or my father's side? And I get, well, okay, it came from my father's side. Is it from my father's father's side or my father's mother's side? Turns out it was from my father's mother. And I just keep going back. Where did it start? And I have gone back as far as it started in 10 generations. And it doesn't matter what the event is. You can go down generationally and go, why is it? I went through a whole process and did some healing stuff with all of that. But we can go back with, there are things, like I had a client one time. She said, I don't know what it is, but I know in the last three generations, none of the oldest daughters get along with their mothers. And you can go back and go to that first time it happened and call in your healing team and go back in time. There is no time. Go back in time and ask for healing work to be done to heal the wound in that mother and in that daughter and ask for the healing of it through generations. And it changes things. It just changes things. And every time I do that, and I do it with a client or someone else, if I need that healing, I get it. Well, I'm more claircognizant, so I get the knowing that's there. And it's whether I'm working with a client or, or working with myself. There are times, very few times, and it's like just for a word or two that I'm clairaudient. Many people think that I'm clairvoyant because I can describe I can describe the angel behind you in the colors. And I can describe different things that I'm seeing or hearing. So I have encodement technicians. I have soul healing, soul healing angels. I have, um, I'll call up on people and say, listen, I'm working with this client or I need help with any experts out there in this field. Would you please come and work with me? Amma has been talking to us and she said, so Yeshua, that's what we call him, Yeshua, Jesus, you may have heard him say, do not try to take the splinter out of your neighbor's eye without taking the plank out of your own. And she said, as you grow, and most of the people listening to the things that I do are not new on the spiritual path. And she'll say, you have been doing an excellent job of getting rid of the planks of the logs or the trees even, which are like really developed behavior patterns. It's time to start looking for the splinters. It's time to start going deeper and deeper into yourself. She just, this was the last, last weeks. And so I have asked my healing team and said, I want to do this. That was really pretty easy for me. And one of the things that brought me deeper into that connection was becoming involved in the charismatic realm. And then through healing touch and energy medicine and different types of meditation practice and then channeling. It really does. Therapeutic touch used to be taught within healing touch and I understand they don't do that anymore. But when I took Healing Touch, Therapeutic Touch was in there. They have some similarities. Therapeutic Touch is a particular modality. Healing Touch is a collection of techniques. But they're very closely related. Both of them were started by nurses. It's similar to, it's not taught in Healing Touch anymore, but it used to be taught in Healing Touch. Well, and I can understand that because I was too. And um, Texas is Bible Belt area. And the Houston area has Bible Belt area in it. And so people would say, when they were doing this, they would say, this is not of God. And I really had to remember, I was in the convent when this was introduced to me. And I said, okay, Jesus, 
I know, and this is when I believed in heaven and hell. Now I just believe in home. I said, I know, Jesus, that you want nothing less for me than to be with you forever in heaven. I didn't believe in incarnation, reincarnation at that time. Now I do too. We're always with God. So I know that you want nothing less. I ask that if this is wrong, that you put something in my way that stops it, you make it difficult. And instead, there's very little snow in Southeast Texas. And instead, I, it's only what I could imagine is a bobsled going straight down. And I became more and more involved with it. I discovered that I had a gift for being able to bring in energy and I had a gift for tapping into the energies of God.